Okay, next up we have Daniela Bartelize Graf and Veronica Derer from uh, Wellesley College. They're going to describe the multi dimensional um, approach involving student surveys, course evaluations, instructor interviews, and classroom discourse analysis um, that they developed to assess blended Italian classes at Wellesley and um, what insights that this approach can provide. Great, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, Great, so the focus of our presentation is actually not my course, but the evaluation. And so the course that was evaluated it was a blended course in Italian, intensive Italian, first year, uh, taught at fall, in the fall of 2014 at uh, Wellesley College. And uh, the course was developed entirely at uh, Wellesley, uh, was online, so no use of uh, uh, any textbook. As I said, the focus of our presentation is going to be the assessment. So my job here is simply to introduce you briefly, introduce you briefly to the content of the course, and then Veronica will talk about the assessment. Um, the course uh, was developed on the EdgeDex platform. EdX, uh, as many of you may know, is a consortium originally founded by MIT at Harvard for the production and delivery of uh, MOOCs, massive online courses. Now <coughs> it has expanded to probably more than 50 colleges. And as I said, the course that I developed on their platform is a first year Italian language and culture course, probably now already expanding into the second year. It has already been offered in many, um, in many forms. In the first time was a Spark, so not a MOOC, but a, a small personal online course. It means that the course was completely online, no face-to-face, -face, but the number of people was relatively limited because we invited only the Wesley community, alumni, incoming students, prospective students. The second time was offered as a blended course in two forms. One at Wesley, as I mentioned, three hours a week, face-to-face, um, for a course that normally meets uh, five hours. And the second time in MIT in the spring, I just finished in a more um, highly blended version, two hours a week face-to-face, -face, again, for a course that normally meets five times. Plan for the fall, again, um, might be used by selected high school as a textbook, so in those high schools where Italian is not offered as a language, or uh, as a self-study in, uh, sorry, the opposite as a textbook in those uh, class, in those schools where Italian is already offered as a language or a self-study where Italian is not offered. However, as I said, the, um, uh, the focus of our presentation now is on analyzing the um, assessment of the blended course that I taught at Wesley. Now, briefly, um, if I can quickly go online, I just wanna show you the structure of the course. Uh, so here we are on the EdgeDex platform, and as you see, uh, we have a, a left-hand side column where all the um, units are listed. And uh, for example, here we are in unit 12, uh, and under unit 12, there are all the specific lessons. In particular, we are in 12.2 uh, C in personal, in personal construction. And then we go up and on this horizontal um, bar, we have all the single components of that lesson. So basically the idea uh, for us was to develop material that would meet different learning styles. So we present the same content, whether it's a grammatical unit or a cultural unit, uh, by using different venues. And here you have an example of how we present the scene personale. Uh, the impersonal construction. So if you are, uh, say, a visual or auditory learner, you might want to plunge directly into a video that we, um, a series of videos, actually, each lesson has one. We have a total of, uh, I think, 45 now. Uh, videos that are skits uh, that we shot on campus using as actresses, our uh, native speakers of Italian. You can watch the video with, uh, uh, time transcript or without, uh, you can also, the, you know, the, this lesson, for example, this specific presentation is step by step because you can uh, uh, learn first the vocabulary, uh, actually download uh, 
also watch the Eng English uh, trans um, Italian and English transcript. Uh, you can then you have the face of listen and learn, and then you have the face of test yourself. And then we move down to a more um, participatory phase. In pre I'm not going in for lack of time, um, in which you have uh, um, a unit, I mean, a, an exercise which is voice, voice comparison, for voice comparison, in which two uh, waveforms are presented. One is the original in the native, uh, the native speaker saying the sentence, and the second. Um, waveform is uh, the student uh, re uh, recording his or her own voice and you can compare the two. We also have uh, um, a uh, podcast that we're actually just uh, finishing developing now and in the podcast we um, have reproduced some of the uh, bits of the dialogues from the video and the student has the possibility of actually participating, <coughs> becoming one of the characters, there is a voice in the background in English giving prompts, now you say such and such. So this is an example of how um, uh, this unit can be developed for say the um, auditory or the visual learner. We also have for the more traditional learner, we have uh, uh, PDF files and down uh, underneath the same PDF files but with uh, um, audio files of all the examples. And again, I want to stress is the same content pre presented in different ways. We also have uh, um, a slideshow with animation. So if you want to, um, uh, in any event, uh, this is basically the point. And, but my, um, the focus again of my presentation is not the course itself, rather Veronica's um, assessment of the course. So if you have more questions, we can um, you know, certainly discuss the content of the course later. Later. So now Veronica, we'll try to be brief. So if you're interested, we are going back to the PowerPoint. So the question is, you know, we're doing all these wonderful things in classrooms, and we have really no way of knowing how actually those classrooms function and how blended learning is really impacting uh, classrooms themselves. Hard to really measure students' learning. I mean, we're in a big university and we have a, a, you know, a group that is doing the blended learning with the same professor and keep all those variables. It's just a really impossible task. So we were thinking about how and wellsley we can evaluate some of these courses. Not only are we doing it with Italian, we're doing it with our other blended learning courses. So there was an online student survey, which was very helpful. And if you would like that, we're going to pass the sheet around so you can um, see some of the surveys we have. We are already on our fourth survey, right, David? So um, there's tons of things we're doing on online surveys, and that was helpful. But this from a student's perspective. So. You know, uh, we, we have to take it with a grain of salt. The second one, which is the one that I really want to concentrate on, is discourse analysis. I don't know if any of you have heard of discourse analysis. So my specialty, yes. So my specialty is classroom ethnography, so discourse analysis. So I was invited for, by one of my colleagues and, say, and said, well, this might be a way we can learn what actually is happening in this blended learning classroom. So what we did with Daniela is, so for those of you who don't know it, a, a, a lot about this course analysis, it really is pretty objective because it is a videotape, everything is transcribed, whatever has happened in the classroom, of course there's interpretation, but it really kind of shows exactly uh, what occurred at that moment. And it really puts a microscope and analyzes both pedagogical and social interactions. Um, so how do, how do we do this course analysis? So the process is what we did with Daniela, you don't need to take just one class because that will not give you very good data. Uh, the professor is very aware, the students are very aware. So I do a minimum of three videotapes and then I close my eyes and I select one. So not very scientific, <laughs> but it's the best way that I can uh, think of just randomly uh, using one. So what happens, you transcribe the whole session, and you're going to say that's a lot of work. 
Yes, it's a lot of work, but luckily there are lots of companies nowadays that do it very cheaply. Uh, so if you're interested in using this to really understand what is happening in blended learning classrooms, there's a, and you can train students, and they love to do it. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that if you want. So what happens then, you divided uh, this transcription in what we call interaction units. And interaction units are really turn-taking units. <coughs> and the classroom has a very, very specific turn-taking units. Have you heard of the IRF pattern? OK, this here it goes. So you ask um, a student, what is 2 and 2? That's the interrogation. That's the question. The student, the R is the student response, 4. And the teacher gives feedback, great. And that is the actual pattern that you find in most classrooms, which you don't find in real life. And it's probably, and actually what we're trying to break a little bit with this blended learning. We want a little bit more of more natural language in this course than this very fake pattern that is only, there's a power. I mean, it's where the teacher has the power. The teacher's the one who asks, the teacher's the one that gets so then afterwards, we didn't do this with Daniela because of time, you divided it into message units. Message units are the smallest unit of meaning. And they give you a lot of quantitative data. They give you a lot um, about the type of feedback you give. They give you a lot of who talks most, uh, what significant talk there is, what kind of questions you ask in the classroom. Uh, if students ever question, you know, students do not question a lot in class, um, which is also not actually what we want. So we divide it into message units, and I'll show you a little example. And what we did with Daniela is we did it in instructional units. And instructional units is when you have a change of both social and pedagogical um, interaction. What it means is if it's teacher to student, that's one type of interaction. However, if you change it student to student, that's another type of interaction. Student to students is another type of interaction. So when there's a change of interaction, that's an instructional unit. And also, it's a pedagogy, so topic-wise. So if you went from teaching the future or introducing your vocabulary, like it was with Daniela, then that's one. If it's um, a practicing that vocabulary, is another. If it's practicing a grammar point. So those are lesson phases. And with Daniela, they were very clear. Usually, I don't know if you understand how clear those lesson phases are in your own classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we don't know our own classrooms, but they are very specific. So, so this is a sample of a discourse analysis, and don't get turned off and go, ah, 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 because it's not, you know. So, what, the first one, when you see the line, it's the teacher says, okay, if you deposit, and this was in a math classroom, mm -hmm. um, a thousand, how much interest would you earn, blah, 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 and, blah, and you see how complicated his questioning is. You know, imagine if you were a student. So, the student asked, by a, so, so $50, and the teacher says $50. That's what we call equity in this course analysis. And so it, 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 it has a lot more details, but I'm not going to go into it. So what we discovered with Daniela's, which was really interesting, is because of the blended learning, because students were online, her grammar explanations were shorter than the usual, which is good. So there's less lecture going on. Um, the target language was more personalized and creative, so she was able to ask students to get into pairs and use the language instead of explaining all the little details of the language. And this can go for any subject matter. Um, it was more unplanned, which is, you know, she was able to talk more freely. Um, native speed like. I mean, this was an, an elementary Italian course. And I'm okay with Italian, but not to it. And she was. And a good pace, I must say. <laughs> and she used humor. I mean, how many of you understand humor in a second language? I, I thought that was a biggie, and the students laughed. So we knew that they were. <laughs> I, I hate that in advance. <laughs> <laughs> it was random, we chose this as And um, there was extemporary talk about target talent culture, which we usually are not able to do in a <laughs> year because of what they had seen on, online. So all of these results were really um, great to see that the blended learning had had an, an effect 
into the classroom part of it. Um, and again, the students accept that they had what we call a higher level of ambiguity, as we call it in pedagogical terms. They were willing to, 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 to be less, you know, preoccupied with each word because they thought they had the, the background knowledge. Um, so this is what this course analysis does. Now we did have other um, um, features which were interviews of the professor. I interviewed Daniela twice and I'm doing interviews now of three professors who are using blended learning. And, oh my god, what, we are, what I'm discovering, David doesn't have the, the data yet, but it's incredible. All, all of them mention the same things. For example, <laughs> learning from students, which is a big thing. You know, so a, a, a professor who used Omeka um, learned from the students because they chose their own artifacts. This was in a classic study. And they, he learned from what the students had chosen. And it, it just it becomes really, the, the part that worries me, and that's why I'm going to push this a little bit more, is that um, all the professors say that their assumptions about learning and teaching and not really change a lot. Those professors who really wanted to be still in charge of the class mm -hmm. and wanted to be the mediators of discussion, they remained with that role. Mm -hmm. However, because I didn't have time to do a discourse analysis, which we will do, I hope, more in the future, um, that would have to be, you know, really uh, seen in that classroom discourse if that really happened. But most professors have been still lectured for for a time and that they still like to mediate discussion. And so the flipped classroom um, to me is still an ideal. I haven't been able to analyze any real flipped classroom. So if you think you have a flipped classroom, we would love to look at it <laughs> and do a discourse analysis on it. And so um, so it, it's a work in progress at this point, all this, all this research. And uh, we have a sign-up sheet if you're interested in the PowerPoint. Um, in Probably. any of the other, um, we're planning on maybe forming a Google group for people who are interested in uh, assessment or blended learning. So just very informal if you want to pass. So when we have questions, if you have any questions about all the other student surveys and everything else they do, we'll be more than happy to answer.